this MPI course has been in existence for a long time, actually, possibly almost. There has been an MPI course for almost 20 years, actually. Um, that we've been running. So there's a lot of people have been involved. I've been running it as part of the MSC for over 10 years now. Um, so what we're going to do on the first day, we're going to talk quite a lot about concepts. So we're not going to do a programming example until after the coffee break, because it turns out that the biggest problem people have with MPI is actually the concepts. You can actually write working MPI programs for a day or so without actually understanding what you're doing, and then you hit a brick wall. So it's really important to understand what you're doing up front um, so that you write correct programs. The syntax is just the syntax, but the concepts may, may not be completely familiar. We'll talk about basic MPI programs, then we'll do point-to-point -point communication, which is the fundamental way of exchanging messages in MPI, and then there'll be a lecture at the end uh, on modes, tags, and communicators, which is kind of a technical feature of MPI, but again, it's quite important to understand them. Second day, we'll go on to something which is very important, but some people find conceptually a bit difficult, are non-blocking communications. Then we'll talk about collective communications and a couple of more advanced topics, virtual topologies and derived data types. Um, actually, I just realized. Hello, hello, okay, fine. Just checking it was recording the, uh, the audio. Uh, and then the final day, the final day is, I'll give a couple of talks one to introduce, but the main reason for the final day is just, I'm going to give you a case study. It's the nearest thing. So the challenge is to get you to do something which is interesting and useful, but doable, A, in a short time, and B, after only a couple of days of MPI training. But I've got an image processing example, which is, um, uh, which is it's possible to at least get started in, in a, like two, half a day, two thirds of a day. I will give a lecture on MPI design, general MPI, issues which only really make sense after you've had a go at writing a real MPI program. And, but then in the afternoon, the idea is just to, um, Friday afternoon, just carry on with the exercises if you feel like it, or we'll have a few people here to talk about general issues. So that's more of an open session. So the aim is, it's a practical course to teach you to understand the message passing model for parallel programming. That's really important, okay? What does programming a parallel computer using message passing mean? And then write real programs using C or Fortran and using MPI. Um, so we'll do this through a bunch of lectures and notes. These are all on the web. Uh, these are the ones I'm showing. But I said most importantly by writing your own MPI programs. Now I probably because I wouldn't do this if this was an MSC class, but I probably will put all the. We have simple work solutions for almost all the problems. I will put them up pretty early on, but. There is really no point in looking at working examples. They're, oh, that's obvious. Okay, it, it really. I mean, if you get stuck, it might be useful. Once you've got a solution, it's useful, useful to look at another solution to see if you you did it the same way, a different way, whether you did it correctly or incorrectly. But really, there really is no point in just looking at worked examples. They just, you know, you don't learn anything. Because although the syntax is just the syntax, unfortunately, with MPI, the syntax it's slightly slight, can be slightly tricky. Just just because of all the function calls have stupid numbers of arguments and such like. So it, it is worth writing them yourself. You need to make the mistakes yourself till you, so you don't make them in, in, in advance. Why, why do we give this course? Well, the MPI library is the most important piece of software in parallel programming. I mean, I don't know how many, but 99.9, .9, I don't know how many nines you want to use on it, of the cycles on the world's largest supercomputers are burned using programs that use MPI. I mean, they, you know, it doesn't matter if you use OpenMP, you use MPI. It doesn't matter if you use GPUs, you use MPI. It doesn't matter if you use Xeon Phi Accelerators, you're using MPI. So um, there are alternative models coming through now, these sort of PGAS languages and such like, but they're very much in their infancy. So, so you have to know MPI to use large supercomputers. I think writing parallel programming in MPI is fun. It is, depending on how your brain works, but it, it, is, a, it is a surprisingly difficult, different, programming model from serial programming. Some things are very easy to do in parallel in MPI. Some things which are quite trivial, and I'll come to this like, I find an error, I want my program to stop, are actually quite subtle in MPI, well, in, in, in message passing programming. And so it, it does make you think a bit. And so, as I said, I'll put the, the web page up. Uh, all the material is here. These are all the slides. We do have some notes here. I've marked them as historical because um, when I took over the course, the lecture notes and these, the lecture slides and these notes were very much, they were written together. 
um, as I developed the course a bit, I mean, I haven't made huge changes, I didn't really have time to keep the notes up to date. So the notes you should think of as a book. There are places where they're very similar to the slides are the places where they diverge. But the important point is there are exercises in the notes. When I ask you to do exercises, I mean the exercises which are on the, on the exercise sheet, not the exercises which are in these notes. So there's a sheet at the bottom, MPI exercise sheet. These are the exercises we're going to be doing. In some, as I said, in some places, they're the same as the ones in, in the notes. So the, I put the notes up there because they are useful. They're a book, but they're a book which was effectively written late 90s or something. So the Fortran examples are a bit embarrassing, unless you're an old school Fortran program and they might make you feel a bit nostalgic. But um, so, but, but they're, 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 they're there. And they're, they're, there's, there's more text and discursive discussion in the notes um, than is written down in the slides. So, whoops. Uh, does anyone have any any questions? Just as I said, and the other thing is during the course, you know, as I said, all the notes are online. Everything's online. It'll be there after the course. You know, it will be there forever. Um, please ask questions. You know, we have a timetable, but you know, we've got three days. Um, so please just ask any question you want. Okay. Okay. Fine.